Thank you guys so much for the uh, invitation. Uh, all right, so let's get started. So basically today I'm gonna be presenting a case of, um, and I felt, you know, when you do an extreme revascularization, especially when there's no outflow. So you take a picture of the foot and there's no outflow. Um, these are my disclosures. So a 77 year old female presented to us for a non-healing ulcer in her dorsum or the left foot. Uh, at that point, her primary uh, doctors has kind of recommended below knee amputation. And she's coming to us for a second opinion. She has a history of diabetes, not very well controlled, hypertension, AFib, PE, and she continues to smoke. So without further ado, this is essentially the angiogram. And what you see here is, pa is a patent SFA and POP. We go to the below the knee vessels, and what you see here is the AT is nice and, um, and patent, and the, PT and the perineal is small, but kind of goes down. And this is essentially the money shot here. And what you see is essentially the AT comes all the way down, the perineal comes down, kind of gives some kind of collateral to the, but really the posterior part of the foot is not getting any blood, and she's not healing. Obviously, her smoking and not well controlled diabetes is not helping, but um, this is what I mean by no outflow lesion. So what do you do next, right? You know, do you just basically walk away and you know, agree with her first opinion, send her for a baloney amputation? Uh, arguably, there's a lot of work to be done in terms of her medical therapy and in terms of her stopping smoking. That's not an unreasonable option, but she's here to us to get a second opinion about what to do about this. So a couple options that you can do here. You know, a big one is EVIS, right? So if you look, if you take the ultrasound and you look at the distal vessel, it can really tell you a lot. It can tell you if this vessel is open or not. So that can, can be a start where to go. The other thing is, you know, you can obviously try to wire it, but then comes the option. We put, you put a wire down there, there's really no outflow. So you're trying to go by not a lot of calcium to help, unfortunately, but it's also fortunate at the same time. Next steps is what we've learned from our coronary CTO kind of partners is that you put a wire and then before you, before you start ballooning or doing a therectomy, you have to confirm where you are. So you really have to use EVIS and IVIS to kind of move forward. So I put a wire, you know, I wired this lesion, and um, as you see, the wire is kind of going right and left, and you know, but I felt it had a good, it was very meticulous, used the, the, the tip was free, and I used them, you know, a soft workhorse hot wire. But then the, the next question is, you know, do you start ballooning, what do you do? Because there, essentially there's no outflow here. And this is where, you know, IVUS basically came in. So, you know, it's a 014 IVUS, you put it in, and, I felt that changed my case because I went in all the way down and it was intraluminal, big veins. And then I told my team, I'm like, you know, we may be in business because it was kind of worried, right? You're wearing the whole thing blindly. But now Ivis was able to kind of help me say that I am intraluminal. So knowing I'm intraluminal, then I was able to kind of go ahead and provide some therapy. So we went ahead, we did some uh, laser atherectomy in this case. Um, and then we did some balloon angioplasty, which was, we did sequential, uh, in that case, going from a smaller balloon to a bigger balloon. And we did all the way to the pedal loop. So this is, you know, ballooning through the pedal loop and all the way up to that PT, which was pretty sick. Uh, and those are our results. As you see here, the flow in the PT is as fast as the AT. And what we initially thought is a no outflow lesion, you know, with the ballooning, I think we got pretty good results down to the uh, wound and you have a, a lateral plantar that's revascularized. So those are our final results. So what I learned from this case is essentially when you combine uh, EVIS and IVIS at the same point, you know, you really can tackle a lot of challenging lesions. Um, we've learned a lot of this from our CTO operators and people who do coronary CTO. Um, again, here I use laser and, and, and sequential balloon angioplasty, was, which was very helpful. Thank you.